What is going on guys? Welcome back for another video. So in this video, I want to talk about the basics of object detection, uh, what it is, and we're also going to take a look at uh, some of the um, most common model architectures and a little bit of the brief history of object detection in deep learning. So I'm very excited to start off these new series of videos. Um, we're going to build a really solid foundation in object detection. Um, so let's roll that intro and then let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the goal of this video. So first of all, we want to understand what object detection is about and also how it works. Then we want to get an overview of the historical progress so far with some, some different model architectures. Then in the upcoming videos, I'm going to cover and we're going to try to both understand what these things are. And we're also going to implement them um, in PyTorch. And those are intersection over union, uh, non-max suppression, mean average precision, and then uh, we're going to do uh, the YOLO algorithm from scratch. Uh, and I'm going to touch on that the YOLO algorithm a little bit in this video. But if you don't know what those are, that's okay. Uh, those are for some upcoming uh, videos. So uh, to try to understand object detection, we're going to start with object localization. So uh, for object localization, we have uh, an image, in this case, an image of a cat. And for, for being able to localize objects, we want to tell, first of all, what the object is. So in this case, it's a cat. And we also want to uh, give a bounding box for that specific object. So in this case, uh, we would uh, give the bounding box something like this, and then say that that bounding box uh, corresponds to a cat. So object localization is finding uh, what and where a single object exists in an image. So we can only have one object or we're only going to want to localize one, uh, one object per image. Now object detection, on the other hand, is finding what and where multiple objects are in an image. So you can kind of view it that uh, image classification is the most simple task where we just want to say uh, what, the, what it is in the image. But in object localization, we also want to say where that particular object is in the image. And then a, the most general case is when we want to predict uh, what and where multiple objects are, which is object detection. So, you know, to start off, well, how do we even do object localization, which is the uh, more, more simple uh, case of object detection? Well, first of all, you know, for image classification, um, we have an image. And we're going to send that through some CNN, uh, VGG or, or ResNet or something like that. And we're going to get uh, an output, some output nodes for different classes that we have. So let's say we have cat and dog data set. So we're going to get a prediction of, of the probability that it's a cat. And we're going to get a probability of, the, uh, of that it's a dog in the image. Now, for object localization, we're going to add four additional nodes that correspond to the bounding box um, for that particular object. So uh, note here that we need at least four points to define a bounding box. So I guess that in the most trivial case, you would have um, four, four different points for the bounding box, uh, where each of those points have an X and Y coordinate. So you would have eight nodes in total. But if you think about it, then mo uh, four of those would actually be duplicate points. And there's no need to, to have those in, in our output nodes. But so we need at least four points to define a bounding box. And uh, there are different common ways to define these bounding boxes in, in, in data sets. Uh, perhaps the most common is that you have that x1, y1, the output of those, is the upper left corner point, And then x2, y2 is the bottom right corner point. So if you just have those two corner points, then you can then, uh, from those, uh, decide what the corresponding bounding box should be for, for that image or that object rather. But you can also imagine having two points define a co uh, corner point and then you can have two points to define the height and the width of the bounding box. So there are some different common ways to define what these uh, bounding boxes are. Uh, and uh, so if you would do this in a, in a neural network, perhaps you would have some kind of uh, cross entropy loss for the for the predictions uh, in in, in a cat versus dog, but then for the actual coordinates, which could be you know uh, floating values uh, anywhere um, for for the specific pixel values, maybe you would have some L two loss, so so mean squared error on those particular nodes. 
All right. So, you know, the conclusion here is really that localization is not, is no big, it's not, not that big of a problem. Uh, but on the other hand, how do we generalize this for, for multiple objects in an image? Because we can have, you know, arbitrarily many. So we can't have any fixed amount of nodes as our output. And uh, really, there are many different approaches to solving object detection, and each uh, of them are in many ways unique. So we have to look at the particular uh, the case of, of each of them. So let's take a look at some of the most common ones. Well, uh, the sort of the natural extension of localization is a sliding windows approach. So this was one of the most uh, the more early approaches which worked that we had uh, defined a bounding box uh, beforehand. So let's say that is our particular bounding box. Then uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to take this, this uh, bounding box and we're going to take the crop of that image. We're going to resize that image to, to 224 by 224 or whatever our, our CNN model takes as input. And then we're going uh, uh, to see if there's a cat or a dog in that particular crop of the image. Uh, then the idea is that we're going to slide this uh, this bounding box that we defined with this particular uh, step size or with a particular stride. And then, so we're going to crop this part now of the image and we're going to send that through our CNN. And then we're going to do uh, the same thing for, 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 for you know, many, many different parts of the image until hopefully at some point we will have reached the object and we will get a sort of a, a perfect bounding box for that object and then we would you know continue with the rest of the image and uh, just a note here is that the sliding window here is usually a square um, because if you if you have if you don't have a square um, aspect ratio and you um, will resize it to 224 by 224 you might potentially distort some of the um, you know original content of the image uh, but this would really this would work um, even if you would have in this case, more of a, a rectangular uh, bounding box. But anyways, uh, what are the potential problems um, of this approach? Um, and, and sort of the, the most difficult part to, to solve is that we need a lot of computation for this approach. Um, you know, so the we use um, just a pretty large stride in the example that I showed. Uh, so we, we didn't take that many crops of the image. But you know, ideally, we would perhaps move the the bounding box to perhaps one pixel at a time, uh, just you know, in to cover really all of the different uh, regions of the image. But if you would do some math on that, then you would quickly realize that you need to run so many different um, parts of the image uh, through a you know. Remember that we have a huge convolutional neural network, uh, a ResNet or something like that, that we send in. Uh, all of these resized crops, and that's not even all of it. You even need to create, you know, different uh, sizes of the bounding boxes because perhaps um, some cats are are further away, and you would need a smaller bounding box. And then maybe some cats uh, or dogs would be very close up, so you would need need a very large bounding box. So not only do you need to run this uh, for a single image, you need to run uh, on a huge amount of crops. You also need to re rerun it multiple times uh, with different size bounding boxes. And so, if you're, uh, I just want to mention that if you're interested in this approach, uh, this overfeed paper was actually uh, a paper that showed that you can implement the sliding window approach uh, within a comnet. So you wouldn't have to take, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to manually crop all of these parts and then send them all individually through a comnet. You can actually send, you know, just the image once, and you will have obtained uh, sliding windows for multiple, for all of those parts that you wanted to to crop. But even with the overfeed paper, uh, the problem still exists that we need a lot of compute to uh, to use this approach. And also, the second problem is that we need many, or rather, we'll get many bounding boxes predictions for the same object because maybe the bounding box will see the image uh, multiple times. Uh, and uh, we'll see how to solve the second problem uh, in future videos in uh, using non-max suppression. Uh, but solving the first problem, the approach that uh, quickly t took over in, in object detection was using uh, regional-based networks. And so uh, 
this is going to be just an overview of them, but uh, we're essentially in regional-based networks. We have uh, some input image, and we, we have an algorithm uh, to extract some region proposals, and this wasn't a neural network, uh, at least not in the original paper. Um, so what they did was that they used selective search, through, so they used some deterministic algorithm that extracted potential bounding boxes uh, for the image. And, uh, you know, mo you know, most commonly you would have maybe three or four objects in an image, uh, or maybe less. Uh, but so they extracted about 2,000 two um, bounding box, um, you know, region proposals for that image. So uh, if there was an object with a very high probability, it's going to extract that region. And then what they did is that they resized all of those potential regions to a fixed size of uh, 224 by 224 that they ran through a convolutional neural network. So VGG or, or ResNet or something like that. But I guess at this time it was a much smaller uh, network. But so then they did the class predictions for, for uh, sort of that particular crop. Now this image right here is a little bit simplified because uh, they actually had additional outputs right here um, for potential adjustments um, for the original region proposals. So they actually outputted uh, values if they wanted to potentially change where the original bounding box was in that region. And so uh, what this solved was really that, first of all, we have a fixed number of 2,000 uh, images that we're going to send through our ComNet, which was uh, a lot less than what was needed um, for sliding windows. But also additionally, you know, we, we, we don't have to worry about determining uh, the bounding box uh, size for our crops because this is going to be solved with um, this selective search algorithm. Uh, and interesting, interestingly, uh, they also released three papers on this. So this is just the original paper in RCNN, but then uh, this, they also, the second paper was fast RCNN and faster RCNN. And uh, at the end of these uh, papers, they actually also um, changed the uh, region proposal to also become a neural network. And uh, just a note is that these networks can be very tricky to implement. All right, so what are you know some potential problems with this approach? Uh, well, um, it's still slow, even if they made you know two papers with fast RCNN and fast RCNN. Uh, it's still very far away from being real-time object detection. Um, and then it was perhaps an unnecessarily complicated two-step process in that we first want to have some region proposal, and then we want to determine for each of those regions, is this a bounding box or not? You know, ideally, we would, we would have just one single step end-to-end. Uh, -end. And this is when the YOLO algorithm, uh, you only look once, uh, comes into play. So what the, I'm, I'm going to go into much more depth on this particular uh, model uh, when we're going to also implement this from scratch. Uh, in PyTorch, but I want to explain just the idea of how it worked. So uh, first of all, they had the original image, and what they did is that they split this image into an S by S grid, uh, and they used a 7 by 7 grid in this case. And what they did then is that each cell is going to be responsible for predicting uh, both if there's a bounding box in that cell, and then it's also going to output if there's a and what, what the class probability is for that particular cell. So just starting with the class probability, as you can see here, the blue ones here corresponds that it's a dog in those cells. Uh, and then the yellow ones are that it's a bike. And I'm not sure the red ones might be background in this case. And then we also have uh, these, um, these purple ones uh, or pink ones that are for the car in the background. So those are for the class probabilities and for the bounding box um, predictions. Uh, how they defined it is that a bounding box, a cell is responsible for outputting the bounding box if it's a, if it's the center point of the object. So let's say for the dog, for example, maybe this right here would be the center point. Then that cell is responsible for uh, predicting an, um, a bounding box. But again, as you can see, it's kind of hard to for the cell to know if it's responsible uh, for 
for being the center of that object. You know, perhaps this cell right here would think that it's this that this is the center of the object. So what you get is a is you know these many many different bounding boxes as output. And again, you maybe want to run this through some uh, algorithm to clean the bounding boxes up. And we're gonna cover that in a future video. Uh, for the YOLO, you only look once family, there were actually four papers, uh, YOLO v1, uh, four papers so far, I should say, YOLO v1, uh, v2, v3, and v4. Uh, and YOLO v4 was just released a couple of months ago. So this is still a very uh, popular algorithm. Uh, and the first one was released in uh, at, the, at the beginning of 2016, I believe. But I will focus primarily on the original YOLO algorithm in my implementation. And I think the f the foundation that we we gain from that, you you'll be uh, relatively comfortable with implementing the newer architectures. All right, that was just some information about object detection. Uh, and uh, in the next video, we're gonna go and take a look at intersection over union. Uh, which is a way to for us to evaluate um, bounding boxes. So when we get a bounding box output, how do we know if this bounding box is actually any good? Um, and that's what we're going to cover in the next video.